Little Harrison is sure happy, and his parents? Well, they're over the moon. We saved $22,000. That's how much they would have had to spend on the commission if they had used an agent to sell their house. Instead, the Hatchers did the marketing, staging, and open houses themselves. We're a young family. We're just starting out. This is our second home that we're just moving into. And... possible listing. If I get this listing, I've already agreed to a 5% commission rate and it's a referral from another agent. So I'm going to pay a 25% referral fee on the listing side and I'm going to split that 5% as I do every listing I've ever had 50-50 with the buyer's agent. The only time I never split a commission 50-50 with a buyer's agent is if I were taking less. I've never paid a buyer agent less than 2.5%. Hey, Minnie, what are you doing? Okay, so what inspired me to do this video was an email I got last week from Inman that stated the buyer's agent commission has fallen to the lowest point since 2017. So I wanted to shed a little light on this and give you the positives of this situation, tell you what I think is going on. Now, we've heard all kinds of stuff about commissions lately over the past, say, two or three years. You know, we've got Redfin that is disclosing to the public what the buyer's agent commission is. I did a video on the Wall Street Journal article a couple months ago about how real estate agents are gearing up for a fight to save their commissions that stated that Joe Biden in a wide-ranging executive order asked the Federal Trade Commission to adopt rules to address unfair or exclusionary practices in the real estate industry. I found another recent article from Forbes that really goes into the depth here in the beginning about the history of the National Association of Realtors, which is very interesting to kind of hear this story play out. Then the article takes a turn that real estate commissions are fixed and that 6% is just a number that real estate agents have kind of just gotten out of thin air and they just won't go any lower and that's a form of price fixing. And he writes, yet price fixing in the form of commission standards in spite of all the rules and regulations is still happening today. Is that why most real estate agents and brokers still charge 6% commission? Better question, who selected that percentage and why? Was it the dishonest curb stoners? Even better question, if laws were put in place to stop price fixing, why do most agents and brokers still charge 6%? Why is it still 6%? Well, the fact is that it's negotiable, right? He goes on to say that it's negotiable. He's trying to scream to the public that, hey guys, it's negotiable. The commission is negotiable. You do not have to pay 6%. You can negotiate. I'm here to tell you that I believe the general public understands very well that commissions are negotiable. I'm getting asked to negotiate my commission commission on every deal. I negotiate my commission on every deal. So I believe that the public is in well uh, educated position to, to know that this is a negotiable situation. The fact is, is that we do a lot of work and that's what this article doesn't want to go on to say. What they say is that the commission works to benefit neither buyer nor seller and creates little incentive to buy the outstanding service that agents are capable of. That is wrong, right? That is absolutely wrong. And if that were the case, 
then commissions will be much lower because sellers and buyers would not pay the commissions they're paying today. But why do they pay the commissions that they pay today? Well, it's because they know that we do a lot of work behind the scenes that they do not want to do. It is a very tedious job, believe it or not. Now, the people that are out there that sell tons of properties with very little effort, they worked their ass off to get in that position. They put systems in place. They have admin, they have systems for this, that, and the other, and they've leveraged their self. So that's true, but however, leveraging and hiring and having employees, so on and so forth, also costs a lot of money. So people have to understand that this is not an easy job. There's a lot of liability. There's a lot of moving parts. And if the public was, you know, if they wanted to pay less, they would pay less. Trust me. The fact is they can't find anybody to do it for any less because of what kind of job it is. Even with all the discount brokers, the advancements in technology, I'm still getting five to six percent. Now I've taken some lower than five in the past year. I've always said for a long time, many years, we can pull up past videos that I think that eventually it's going to get to where four is the standard where we're getting two and two. Totally um, uh, possible, totally possible, and still extremely lucrative, right? But however, you are working for the money. Let's dive into this Inman article, Buyer Agent Commissions Fall to the Lowest Point Since 2017. They say intense competition appears to have driven down the average buyer's agent commissions last fall to their lowest point since at least 2017. They don't know before that because they're going by Redfin data, which only started collecting this data since 2017. They don't really know before prior to 2017. Again, it's only looking at the buyer's agent, so we really don't know based on this article or the Redfin data what the listing agent commission is or what that total commission is. And I disagree with the immediate tagline here that intense competition appears to have driven down the average buyer's agent commissions. Not true at all. I'll go on to explain this in just a second. So here we're looking at the actual chart and the data that they're going by here, and we're seeing the average buyer commission here was at 2.75 back in 2017 and it's at 2.63 now you can see by the chart that there were waves where it did increase right but the trend was lower now why is this commission rate going lower and lower and lower well there's there's two things I want to show you here Number one is the average dollars per transaction for a buyer's agent. And this is Redfin data right here. I'm kind of wondering why they didn't you know, magnify or put a spotlight on this part of the data where the average commission for a buyer was $9,610 back in 2017. It hit a high of over $13,000 earlier in uh, 2021. And right now we're at about $12,415. So it went from, let's just say it was you know, under 10,000 back in 2017, where now it's over 12,000. Agents, buyer's agents are making more per transaction right now than they were back in 2017, and that's by a lot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is because of the increase in prices. We've had such an incredible price run that naturally we're making more per transaction, even though the actual rate for a buyer agent has dropped a little. So this is actually the natural progression of commitment commission rates when we go through these market cycles, okay? When prices go up, the rate's gonna come down a little bit because we're making more money, okay? And the buyers and sellers, you know, it ends up being more and more and more of a chunk because it's a percentage. Naturally, it's gonna put downward pressure on the rates. But as prices increase, we're actually making more money. With real estate prices soaring, real estate commissions in real dollar terms have been rising right along with them. So I was in the market back in 2002 when I got in the business. I was there through the big boom of the 2003, four and five. I was here through the crash. I got out of the business, came back in, built myself back up, right? And to the point that we are now in the cycle. So this is my second huge, you know, jump in price part of the cycle that I've been through. And this is the same thing that happened been back in the 2002 and three range. I found this chart here, which actually shows you the total commission for listing agent and buyer agent combined. Okay. And this goes all the way back to, to 1992. And if you look at this chart back in 1992, on average, we were getting 6% on average. 
Okay, now look at it in 2005, it had dropped from 6% to 5.02%. Okay, so a big drop there. Okay, but then, then that's when the, the boom happened. Okay, 2003, four, and five. Naturally, it's gonna put some downward pressure. And then look what happened as we went through the crash. Commission rates went back up 5.3, 5.38. But then in 2012, I would say, is the first year that we saw that appreciation kind of coming back. Until that point, it was coming down, down, down. Naturally, as prices come down, commission rates are gonna rise a little, okay? And then as prices started to come up, we see commissions over the next you know, six, seven years kind of trend down, okay? But then in 2019 and 20, we see it kind of spike back up. We're gonna see those ebbs and flows in the average commission rates. And this chart doesn't show you 2021 or 2022, but I can guarantee you if it did, it would show a decline because in 2020, towards the end of the year, that's when things really took off. And in 2021, of course, things just went really crazy price-wise. And that's gonna put downward pressure on commissions. And in Meneva says it right here, even though the buyer agent is technically getting a smaller share of the pie, their check is 6.9% bigger than it was a year ago. So they're making 6.9% more on average than they were just a year ago. And it says that could change if home prices start to level off. Of course it's gonna change as prices start to level off. That's what happens. That's the market cycle. That's how this thing works. My question to Inman is, is why didn't you put a subject and title the article that says buyer agent commissions are up 6.9%. So I dug a little deeper here and found this article where it says real estate agents target record 100 billion as home sales boom, which I thought was really interesting. Now this article was written mid last year. Okay. So this wasn't the official number, but what I thought was really interesting in this article is it showed us a chart here of the total commissions paid out since 2002 when I started in the business. So it goes back 20 years and it shows you the different um, billions of dollars in commissions that were paid out year over year. And last year we hit a high, 2020, we hit a high, 90 billion. 2021 is estimated to hit 105 billion. Now, I couldn't find the article that actually gave me what we ended up with. If you can find that article, please send it to me. I'd love to read it. But I would say without a doubt, we hit $100 billion in commissions last year. So I'll tell you something else that I think is going on here. And this goes along with the fact that Redfin was collecting the buyer agent commission data. And it shows buyer agent commissions down a tad as far as the rate goes. Again, they're making more money. However, there is a thing going on in the market right now where more and more listing agents are taking more of the commission than the buyer agent. They're not splitting 50-50, they're taking more from the buyer's agent. And I never understood that philosophy. I never understood why a listing agent feels like they deserve more. If anything, the buyer agent deserves more. There's nothing I hate more than doing a deal with an agent, coming down to closing, looking at the HUD statement, realizing they've made thousands of more dollars than me. It, it, it just didn't make any sense. We were working together on the deal. I brought the buyer. If I bring the buy, if I don't bring the buyer, there is no deal. <clears throat> of course, if there was no listing, then there was no deal either. I get that. However, if you were to survey agents and say, which one's easier, which one is less work, everyone is gonna say listing agents have the easier job of the two, okay? If you don't wanna go out there and show property, run people around, help people get financing, deal with the inspectors, deal with all the different things that are involved on the buyer side, okay? When you add all that stuff up, it's tremendously more work than the listing agent and what they actually put into the deal. And I'm talking about everything from prospecting, marketing for the listing, going to a listing appointment, I get all that. But at the end of the day, how are you gonna sit here and say that this is more valuable than what the buyer agent's bringing to the table? And I'm not saying that the buyer agent is doing more, even though I believe they are, okay? But I still think that even with that being said, 50-50 is the way to go. I've always done 50-50. I've never paid anyone less than 2.5% on any of my listings. The ones I take under five, I take less as the listing agent than the buyer agent in that circumstance. And my second and last point with this is that, sure, real estate commissions may have some downward pressure, but that's because the market it has exploded so much. We're actually making more money per transaction 
right now. You need to be eating this up with everything you got. You need to be going all in with this. But at the end of the day, as things level out, we may get into uh, the next cycle of the market. What's gonna happen then? The commission rates are gonna come back up just like they did after every crash in history. So I appreciate you watching today's video. I'm here to help you, right? And the same passion you feel from this video is the same passion I'm gonna use to help you with whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. I'll see you guys on the next video. We'll talk to you soon.